Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about how many copies of your first comic that you should be printing to go and sell into the big wide world. And the reason for this video is because this is a question I get asked time and time again from new creators and they come up to me and say, Matt, just finished my first comic how many should I print? And it's not an exact science and it can be quite a daunting subject to you know approach because you don't wanna blow all your budget on comics that you're gonna be left unsold. So what I wanted to do is do a quick video just to give you some advice and some tips and just some stuff to think about before you hit that go button and spend all your money on your first print run, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So here we go. Also guys, before we start today, we actually have a competition. My buddy, Chris Fornley, AKA Raid 71, has gifted me a copy of his print of Daredevil because he knows how much I love Daredevil. And he has given me a spare to give away on the channel because he's very, very supportive of it and I love him lots. Now, Chris has done work for Marvel, DC, Disney, Lego, you name it, he has done it. That's his Incredible Hulk poster that you see behind me as well. Now, he's given me this to give away on the channel. Now, if you wanna be in the chance of winning this, make sure you watch until the very, very end because I'm gonna show you how you can win that free of charge. Here's my gift to you just to say thank you for all the love and support. So make sure you're watching to the end. Okay, so first things first, you need to be realistic about the amount of comics that you think you can sell. Just because you have finished your first comic and you think it's the best thing since Fantastic Four issue one, doesn't mean you're gonna sell thousands and thousands of copies. And that is the hard truth about small press independent comics. Unless you've got a publisher or a massive following that's gonna support you, a massive core audience, the likelihood of you being able to sell X amount of comics is not gonna happen. So you need to kind of take your ego out of the equation and just go, do you know what, realistically, how many comics am I gonna be able to sell? Because just because you have the budget to print 500 copies of your book doesn't mean you are gonna be able to sell 500 copies of your book. And yes, probably over time, you know, a couple of years or, you know, 10 cons or so, you may be able to sell that many comics. But if this is your first comic coming straight out of the gate, that's gonna be highly unlikely. So think about a realistic number of about how many copies that you need to print. Plus, hopefully over the last couple of weeks, I've shown you that you know using someone like an online printer is not actually a big daunting task as a lot of people think it is. And the actual costs are involved are actually a lot lower than I anticipated when I first started using them. And in fact, the cost of using online printers actually come down quite a bit. So if this was me starting fresh for the first time out, I would probably print less but more often because the unit cost between you know printing 100 copies and say something like 300 copies is actually very, very slight. You're not gonna lose a lot of money by doing that, but you're not gonna be overextending yourself by spending your entire budget on comics that you not, might not be able to sell for a couple of years. So I would do less is more. And if you have missed those videos, they're gonna come up at the end of this one, so make sure you check them out. Now, the next question you need to ask yourself is what type of person are you? Are you an extrovert or are you an introvert? Now, watching this channel, and if you've met me in real life, you could probably See that I'm actually quite an extroverted person. I'm a salesman in my day job, so you can pretty much put me in any room and I will talk to anyone. My job is to talk to strangers. I'm talking to strangers right now, looking at the camera. You know, this is a lot harder than it looks, you know, actually speaking into a camera, having no one there. But when I'm at Comic Cons and stuff like that, I find it very, very easy to speak to people, build up a report and sell a lot of comics. Now, I am not saying that introverts cannot sell as many comics as an extroverted person. All I'm saying is if you are a naturally shy person, you may find it a little bit more difficult to actually sell face to face with people. And that's not a bad thing because I've helped introverts before at Comic Cons, you know, show them what I do and help them to actually sell more comics. And that's something that I'm gonna cover on this channel in future dates. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss those. But what I'm saying is this is something that you need to take into account. Now, if selling face-to-face -face is not gonna be your strong suit and you're gonna be focusing on online sales and you know through comic shops, that kind of thing, that's something that you need to take into account when you're actually gonna be selling your comics. Okay, so I just wanted to bring it up so you can bear that in mind. So if you are an extroverted person, you might find it a bit more easier to sell comics face to face. Which leads us to how are you planning to sell your comics? Because I don't think a lot of people give this enough thought because this is where we need to take our creative hats off as comic creators and put our business hats on. Because as soon as you have a comic and you put a price tag on it and you are selling it, you are now a business person. You are now a business owner. And I know it feels like you're sucking the life out of the creative side of comics, but this is what we need to start thinking about a little bit more. So what is your plan? What is your strategy to selling your comics? Are you planning just to sell through an online store, through your social media, or are you planning to sell through comic shops or at comic cons? Now, I'm gonna be going through all of these aspects one by one in future videos, so don't miss them. But these are things that you need to think about because 
If you're planning on focusing just on online and social media, your core audience and your target audience is gonna be a lot smaller because you're basing your strategy on retweeting people finding your work. Whereas if you were going through comic shops and comic cons, you're gonna get your core audience and you're gonna get strangers, you're gonna get walkers past you and that kind of thing. So this is what we need to think about and this is what you need to think about when you are printing you know, your numbers of comics. Also, if you are planning to you know, sell at comic cons, when is that Comic Con? Is that Do you have a Comic Con coming up soon? Because that's gonna play a big factor into the amount of comics that you are printing now. Because if you're planning to say, print 200 comics right now, because you're going to a Comic Con, but that Comic Con is not for another six months, maybe print some now and then print some more later. That way you are not overextending yourself. You are not you know spending your entire print budget on something that's not gonna happen for six months time. But then again, on the opposite, you know, if you've got a Comic Con in a month's time and you were originally planning to, you know, just print like 50 or 60 comics, you might need more. You might not have enough for that Comic Con. So, again, this is the type of thing that you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about numbers of print. Now, this next point is something that I find very, very interesting. And I'm basing it purely on conversations that I've had with my buddies in the UK that have run Kickstarter campaigns. So, if you've had a different experience after running a Kickstarter campaign, let me know. I'd love to know what you think. So, let me know in the comments. But what I mean is, in the UK, especially, we have a very small but supportive core audience that supports our books. You know, we have a select few of a couple of hundred people that you see on Twitter and that kind of thing that you know they're going to retweet you. You know if you do a Kickstarter, they're going to pledge to, you know, to help support that book. And, and that's great. But because we're such a small country, what we find is the same people come to the same Comic Cons, whether it be a Fort Bub or MCM, that kind of thing. And this is, again, purely based on what buddies that have run Kickstarters have told me. You know, I've been to Comic Cons and I've asked them how have sales gone? And a lot of them have said, I've actually sold a lot less than I anticipated. And I've asked why, because their books are really, really good. You know, the Kickstarter did really, really well. And they went, ah, now that's the point. Because that core audience that is supporting those books pledged on the campaign. So when they come to the Comic Cons, they're not gonna be buying that comic for the second time. So they find it harder to sell their comics at Comic Cons than they have via the Kickstarter because the audience already has it. So that's something that you need to take into account now. Is this print run that you're doing following a, a, you know, a Kickstarter campaign? Did you use that campaign to fund your print run? If so, it may be worth adjusting those numbers by you know, 15, 20, 25% lower than you, what you think you're gonna sell because a lot of that target audience already has that book. Now again, this is just from what I've been told from conversations I've had with good buddies now, but that's just what I've been told. So that's something that I would think about if I was doing a big print run. Okay, so I've given you a lot of things to consider, but what I want to do now is we've not really spoken about numbers of print runs. So this is what we're gonna talk about now. Now this is just my advice and I'm basing this on what I would do if I was starting out on my comic making journey again. And to a certain extent, this is something that I still kind of do, but I've tweaked it to allow for the growth that, that I have had over the last five years. So my core audience may be a little bit bigger than someone that's first starting out. And again, there's no shame in that because we all start somewhere. Now, if I was printing my very, very first comic for the very first time, what I would do is I would go look at my social media. I'd look at my biggest social media following, whether that be on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter. So for me, that would be Twitter. I have 4,000 followers on Twitter. Now, what I would do is, if, again, if I was starting out, if I had a thousand followers or lower, I would initially print no more than around 100 copies of my comic. And you're probably thinking, but Matt, that's like 10% of my, less than 10% of my following, so why, why should I do that? Well, the reason for that is, not everyone that follows you on social media is gonna buy your comic. And that's for a plethora of reasons. One, they not, might not be interested in comics. They might just be friends with you because you've got a mutual friend and you like their tweet and you retweeted them so you followed each other, but they're not interested in comics. You know, those people that are interested in comics, they may be in another country, so don't want to pay their shipping because shipping costs are astronomically high at the moment. So they're not going to buy your book. And what you've got to remember is, some people might not want your comic because it might not be their cup of tea. You know, your comic may be a horror comic and some people don't like horror comics, they just buy superheroes. That happens as well. And some people, you know, if it's not Marvel or DC, they don't buy it. So this is what you need to take into account when you're, you know, looking at the numbers that you're printing based on your social media. So if it was me and I had a thousand followers or less, I would print no more than 100 copies of my comic. Now, over and above that, for every thousand followers that I have on social media, I print between 
10 and 20 more copies of that comic. And you're probably thinking, but Matt, shouldn't I print, you know, a hundred for every thousand that I've got? And in an ideal world, that would be fantastic. But what you need to understand is just because your following is bigger doesn't mean that target audience, your core audience, is going to be the same size. It actually gets smaller. So the more followers you have, yes, you will sell more, but you're still going to be selling less. For example, if you've got 2,000 followers, I would print between you know 100 and 120 copies of that comic. If you've got 3,000 followers, I'd print 130. And in my case, you know, I've got 4,000 followers, so I will print 140. But then I've allowed for other things because I sell at Comic Cons and shops, that kind of thing, and I know what I'm gonna sell. So again, as I've shown in the last couple of videos, is you can print as and when you want, okay? So that's what I would suggest. And once you have that number, what you wanna do next is you wanna add X amount of comps in there. And if you don't know what comps are, comps are complementary copies of your comic that you need to give to your collaborators that have worked on the book. So say you've had an artist, a colorist, and a letterer help you out on this comic, make sure you give them all at least five copies each just to say thank you for all their hard work. Above and beyond that, I would keep you know another 10 aside for family, friends, that kind of thing, and uh, to allow for a couple of damaged copies as well. Also, you may wanna add an extra 10 copies in there, you know, for people that you wanna send them to. So these are people like editors that work for comic companies or reviewers, that kind of thing. So once you add all of those together, that's gonna to give you the number that I think you should print for your very first comic. So hopefully that's helped, and now it's time for us to give away a prize. Okay, so you've made it to the end of the video and you wanna be in the chance of winning this beautiful Daredevil poster by my friend Raid71, aka Chris Morley. Now, if you do want to be in with the chance of winning this poster, it could not be any simpler to win it. All you need to do is one, you need to be a subscriber, so hit that button right now. Then all you need to do is go into the comment section and just write the word Daredevil. So just leave a comment saying Daredevil, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give everyone a number that's, you know, put that comment in there. Then I'm gonna do a random number generator and I'm gonna pick someone at random and they're gonna win it and I'm gonna post it somewhere in the world. So could not be easier. Make sure you subscribe and then just put the word Daredevil in the comment section. So I'll do that next week. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found it interesting. Give us a like, share and a subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.